Have you ever dreamt of pumping up your brain power from improving your memory to speaking more languages? A computer chip in the brain is no longer a distant sci-fi dream, and it could actually be a game changer for people with disabilities. Just recently, a paraplegic man was able to walk again with help from brain implants. And some chips these days even contain human brain cells. AI chips and the brain. That's our topic on Shift. US tech titan Elon Musk wants to optimise our brains with his startup Neuralink. The company's already made a name for itself through spectacular experiments on animals. And now Neuralink has received approval to start clinical trials on humans. And in Switzerland, scientists have helped a paraplegic man walk again using brain implants and AI. Take a look. His life has been altered dramatically for the second time. Thanks to an experimental procedure linking the brain to the spine with a digital bridge, a paralyzed man is able to walk again. Within five to 10 minutes, I could control my uh, hips. The brain uh, implant uh, picked up what I was doing with my hips, so that was uh, like yeah, the best outcome, I think, for everyone. After an accident in 2011, Gyatjan Oskam was paralyzed in both legs. Doctors operated to implant electrodes in the 40-year-old's brain and spine. There is one surgery at the level of the brain. We do two little craniotomy, put electrodes in order to record the brain signal. And another surgery at the level of the spinal cord where we put electrodes on the top of the spinal cord at the place that is responsible for leg movement. So between these two, there is communication, an electrical communication, a digital bridge that is then reactivated the legs. It's pretty nuts to see just how far this technology has come. A brain computer interface, or BCI, allows people to communicate with an external machine simply by using their own thoughts. Neuralink, Apple and Google are all developing this technology, but currently the Australian startup Synchron is leading the race. There are already people living with the company's BCI implants in Australia and the US. Sending an email using thoughts alone. Philip O'Keefe has a nervous system disease known as ALS and can't use his hands or speak clearly. A brain computer interface gives him a way to communicate. Previously, to communicate, we've either used our voices or our hands, and, and now there's an opportunity where if you if you don't have control over either, you can still communicate. You can use a phone to send text messages. You can use an email to send um, you know, stories or letters to loved ones. The Stentrode was first implanted in a human in 2019. Stentrode is transported to the brain through blood vessels, which means open brain surgery is not required. The Stentrode unique in that unlike a lot of other technologies, ours uh, takes advantage of the naturally occurring highway of the body, the, the blood vessels to, to get into the brain, uh, without having to do really risky invasive surgery. The Stentrode captures brain signals and transmits them through the blood vessels into a unit implanted in the patient's chest. This unit then sends the electrical signals to a computer or other device. The external system looks at the activity, the electrical activity. Um, it has a database of um, kind of pre-recorded movements that a patient has been trained to um, activate and that the system has been trained to recognize. Um, and essentially, if it sees something the patient is intending to do, um, like a specific movement, it will then um, uh, send a, a kind of an output uh, pulse, which can be used to activate a computer control or else um, something like a, a, an ex exoskeleton. Synchron's technology is still in the trial phase, but their work gives hope to people with paralysis or other disabilities. Brain-computer interfaces could also be used by people without physical disabilities. Elon Musk has predicted that one day we could be controlling our smartphones with devices in our brains. While Synchron's work focuses on developing BCIs for medical use, this technology could also be applied to many other areas. Using our smartphones without even touching them. 
With a brain-computer interface, this could someday be a reality for everyone. A lot of people uh, who don't have any disabilities are interested in using devices like ours to um, you know, connect with their computers or connect with their home environments. Um, you know, certainly that's not what we're, we're doing. We're doing it for, for medical benefit. There's no reason to think this technology won't be adapted uh, and adopted by, by other companies who are making it for that purpose. The technology could have many applications because it could control more than just computers. Essentially everything and anything, anything electronic at all. Um, currently we're using it to um, kind of enable patients to use a, a communication device, but this could also be put towards something like a, um, smart home systems if you wanted to turn on your, your lights, um, or if you needed to control a wheelchair or other kind of assistive technologies. While some dream of using brain-computer interfaces for human augmentation, Synchron solely focuses on medical applications and there is much to be explored in the field. So far, the Stentrode is only recording signals from the brain. But what if the device sends signals into the brain? If you put stimulation or electrical current into the brain, you can prevent things like seizures or, or tremors. Um, and so you know, that's obviously an, an application for us. We can get to almost any region of the brain through the blood vessels. And so it's not uh, unrealistic to think that we can record when a seizure might happen, for example, and then provide stimulation to stop it. Detecting and helping treat neurological disorders could be just one of many ways brain-computer interfaces might be used in the future. Computer chips are used in a variety of technologies such as virtual reality or artificial intelligence. They need to be quick and ideally use as little energy as possible. Cortical Labs, a startup from Melbourne, modelled its chips on the fastest and most energy efficient computer out there, the human brain. The system is called DishBrain and combines silicon chips with human neurons. A computer chip that needs to be fed with unusual sustenance, the DishBrain receives human brain cells, so this chip is somewhat alive. They're certainly alive in the sense that these are living biological neurons on the chip. That doesn't mean, of course, that they're conscious or like a human in a dish, but it does mean that we can use them to be able to test for stuff like the effects that drugs might have on them or model how diseases are. Unlike other companies that try to recreate neural networks, Cortical Labs uses real human brain cells. These can be made from a simple blood donation. The neurons are placed on a fingertip-sized microelectrode array that can send and receive electrical impulses. To test the dish brain's ability to learn, the team used the classic video game Pong. A paddle needs to be moved up and down in order to hit a ball. Dish brain was taught with electrical impulses. Cortical Labs wants to develop the next generation of AI chips by creating what they call synthetic biological intelligence. Just like our brains, the dish brain is extremely energy efficient and can react very quickly. And that's thanks to evolution. If you were, say, a hunter-gatherer in the savanna and you saw a tiger or a lion in the, in the bush, um, you would have only two seconds to make a decision to either fight of, or, or run from this uh, animal. And so uh, if you didn't, you would be eliminated from the gene pool. Uh, and so as a result of that, we just evolved to be very good at processing information at very short periods of time. Hybrid biological chips could be a more sustainable and efficient solution in fields such as robotics, but they could also be useful when testing new drugs. So, uh, if you have something in a in vitro or in a dish model and you can actually test it out before you put it into a human and you know, have an increased chance of success, I think this is going to be a game changer for the industry. A chip that learns fast and is energy efficient, Cortical Labs hopes Dish Brain will mark the beginning of a chip revolution. For a long time, the tech industry has tried copying human intelligence to develop artificial intelligence, machines that can think and act like us. Cortical Labs has a different approach. 
Dishbrain uses the advantages of biological intelligence over AI. There are some 86 billion neurons in the human brain. Whenever we learn something new, they automatically connect with each other and build neural pathways in a fast and energy efficient way. Cortical Lab says their hybrid biological chips do the same. They're highly adaptable, able to learn with minimal power consumption and can do it with relatively few samples, especially compared to machine learning or artificial intelligence. While artificial systems need to be trained with large sets of data, biological systems don't. This means they are more sample efficient. What sample efficiency is, is how much information um, does a system, either an artificial intelligence system or a biological intelligence system, require in order to um, learn from and make intelligent uh, tasks from it. Um, and so the, these uh, biological systems uh, have been shown to actually have significantly higher efficiencies, thereby requiring less data. Over millions of years, our brains learn to react to an ever-changing environment. So just like us, the dish brain is more adaptable than artificial intelligence. We've done tests where we've taken it from playing Pong to playing another game, and we've actually seen in incredible time how the system adapts and changes its behavior for this new game in just a few minutes. AI is more limited in that regard. Through the time-consuming process of machine learning, it is programmed for specific tasks. The dish brain, however, could easily be used for a variety of applications. Many people are fearful that artificial intelligence could become too intelligent and powerful. But if AI has the potential to improve our lives, that's a positive thing, right? For me, the prospect of helping people with neurological disabilities is especially worthwhile. It could have made life a lot easier for both my dad and my grandma. So what's your take? Would you want to put a chip into your brain? To be honest, I'm excited to see what comes next. Thanks for watching and see you next time.